Mm, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel and I am so glad that you uh, stopped in. Uh, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, or just come to visit. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting article that I ran across and I'm looking for a date on it and I don't seem to find one. But I think it's probably recent. Um, new emails reveal Fuji concerns over potential lab leak. Okay. New emails from the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 have surfaced. Now this is 2022, almost 23. So these are from 2020. And they are shedding light on how Dr. Anthony Fuji and other government officials responded. Fuji has pub publicly doubted that COVID came from a lab setting in Wuhan, China. He has consistently denied any miscalculations in research brought on by the Wuhan Institute of Virology. 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 <laughs> V-I-R-O-L-O-G-Y. Virology. Virology. Whatever that is. It, it initials as WIV, so it stands for Wuhan Institute of Virology. Virology, got it. <laughs> I work at it, <laughs> as most of my subscribers know. <laughs> I'll get it sooner or later. Reporter Timmy or Jimmy uh, Tobias recently obtained new emails from the Freedom of Information Act between Dr. Fucci and virologist, virologist in early 2020. The emails reveal Fucci deep concern for the publicity of a lab leak. In an email chain between Fucci, scientist Jeremy Ferrer, F-A-R-R-A-R, Ferrer, of the Wellcome Trust, infectious disease researcher Kristen Anderson, and director the National Institutes of Health, Francis Collins, there were warnings of the Wild West. According to the documents, this Wild West reference pertains to the hardships in China, either in infectious disease research or the WIV specifically. On February 1st of 2020, Fuji considered sending an alert to the FBI and the MI5 about the potential lab leak. Researchers at the Wahoo Wuhan lab argued that the Furin Cleverage site mutated, mutated, causing the lab leak. I'm going to go over that again. <laughs> Hang on. Researchers at the Wuhan lab argued that the furin, F-U-R-I-N, cleavage, C-L-E-A-V-A-G-E, isn't that cleavage, site, mutated, causing the lab leak. When well, I'm a smart person, so I'm kind of going, what does that mean? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I guess I'll find out, I don't know. Anderson expressed concerns in the emails about serial passage conducted with coronaviruses in a level two lab in Wuhan, which is less secure than a maximum security level four lab. Uh, serial passage involves repeated infection of a host to induce mutations without genetic modifications. Mutations mutations without genetic modifications. Witnesses believe the serial passage caused the site mutation responsible for high transmissibility in COVID. Anderson backtracked his previous statements in another email on February 5th of 2020. He called the lab leak a conspiracy theory, but Fucci and Collins raised questions about the role serial passage played in the virus development. According to House Republican lawmakers, Fuji is connected to funding research 
on coronaviruses at the WIV with next to no supervision but denies these allegations. Reporters continue to search for communications between officials and scientists as the public becomes less confident in mainstream media while the White House moves on to other matters. The Biden administration is no longer interested in the origins of the pandemic and the State Department continues to avoid questions on pressing China for further information. Now there's a video there, but I can't, uh, I don't know how to do that yet. So that was short and sweet, but I have a lot of questions, and I bet you do too. What are they talking about? Yeah, Fuji's denying what? What did he know that he's going to deny now? And why were these people, scientists, messing with such a thing to begin with? And then if you'll remember a video I did not too long ago, about a month ago, where these college kids put together some sort of a virus, a coronavirus, kids in college manifested something that could wipe you out right now. Worse than a bomb. You might have read that article. Yeah, you might have read it. I don't know. Questions, questions. We all got questions. But will they ever, ever be answered truthfully? Yeah, well, we'll see. Well, let's go down here. And let's see. No, I think I've done that one. This one uh, pertains to this lady. If I can get it opened. Okay, here we go. Uh, Democrats retain control of U.S. Senate after Catherine Cortez Masto holds Nevada seat. Now, this must have been during the uh, midterms, which this is probably a little late. Is there a date? No. I don't see no date. The Democrat Party will remain in control of the U.S. Senate after incumbent Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, Democrat in Nevada, narrowly fended off challenger, challenger Adam Lackett, Laxalt, a Republican in Nevada, by less than 5,000 votes. Laxet, Laxalt had the lead when Election Day ended, yet several days of mail-in ballot counting later, the Democrat candidate managed to come out on top with 48.7% of the vote compared to Laxalt's 48.2%. Boy, was that close. Wow. With Senator Mark Kelly's victory in Arizona, the left has officially solidified, solidified Senate control for the next two years. The party will retain control of the chamber, no matter how next month's Georgia runoff playoffs uh, by virtue of Vice President Kamala Harris tie-breaking vote reads an Associated Press report. <clears throat> Cortez Masto, the first Latina to be elected to the Senate, was viewed by many experts as one of the most vulnerable do uh, Democratic incumbents in the U.S. She was unable to escape the fact that her voting record was in near-complete unison with President Joe Biden something Laxalt repeatedly emphasized throughout his campaign. Cortez Masto resorted to other tactics like accusing Laxalt of being in favor of a federal abortion ban of verifiably false claim. Stabbing in the back. <laughs> how many videos have you heard me say that's all they know how to do is stab each other in the back? That's terrible. <laughs> Laxalt failed to unseat Cortez Masto despite endorsements from the GOP heavy hitters like former President Donald Trump, Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Ron DeSantis, 
In Cortez Masto's campaign spent almost four times more money than Laxalt's. Oh, they love to spend that money. Buy them a seat. Money talks, BS walks. How many times have I said that? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'll tell you what. It's one thing after another. I don't know about this uh, Washoe County, Nevada. Washoe County, Nevada fuels election security concerns. Well, that was with the midterms. We're past that now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure the counting of the ballots are all in, whether they were mailed in or done in person. I'm sure they're all in, so... Uh, I hope some good came out of it. Let's just say that. Let's hope that some people did the right thing and voted for the right people. I don't know. No, I think I've done that one. So I'm going to go for now. Uh, my animals are getting restless. I see you, Paisley. Paisley's looking at me and she's saying, well, you said we we're going to get a treat after we went outside and I'm waiting right now. <laughs> That's my little Paisley. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. Give someone else a blessing today. Because all in all, somewhere, somehow, we've all been blessed. Be back. <laughs>